It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. This is my exercise room. I come out here and I'm happy, squatting, bending, stretching, whatever, you know. It is also, I, I call it my social room because a lot of people walk by here because there's a new beer garden by the railroad tracks. And they'll park over here and they all come by and they say, whoa, you know, so we stop and visit. Now a daily destination for neighbors who gather serenity along with handfuls of herbs and flowers. It used to be just a lawn to mow. This yard was nothing but really, truly Johnson grass, Bermuda grass, and those sticker burrs. It was nasty. And, uh, but I didn't, I was a, a single mom teacher uh, and <clears throat> I was very busy, so I didn't really have time to come out and work on the garden. Belia took the plunge when her daughters turned into teens. I would come out here and, and it was very relaxing for me <laughs> to be pulling weeds. And before I knew it, I decided, okay, I'm gonna fix this garden up. And it was, a, it was just a step-by-step. Step. It wasn't in the big plan. I started by working in one corner. Anything anybody would give me. Those pass-along plant kind of a thing. Oh yeah, it was, didn't even think about the fact that I could go to a nursery and buy. It was all, um, you know, uh, pass-along plants. People were giving me things. Then I went to a daylily show and boy, that blew me away. Not only did she join the Austin Daylily Society, now her flowers head to competition each May at the group's annual public show and sale. But Velia loves too many plants to put all her flowers into one season's basket. And I have something happening all the time. And my neighbors tell me, Sis, I would love walking by because we want to see what's blooming. And there's always something blooming. I mean, really and truly. And, and I finally, you know, that's the goal of a lot of us gardeners that we want to have continuous, I mean, one season this grows and another. Well, it's happening here in my garden. It is what I like. And if it looks good, fine. If it grows, fine. If it doesn't, okay, that's so be it. You know, I'm not gonna, I used to get so bent out of shape when I would lose something. Oh, I must have done something terrible. And I probably did. But I said, okay, so it's time for you to go. And that's okay. Honeysuckle, I have it growing over there in that pole where that uh, butterfly vine used to be. I don't know how it, that honeysuckle came up, but it's there. And I'm gonna leave it because I love the fragrance and the bees love it. And the hummingbirds and the butterflies love it. I see all kinds of it. So really, I'm more about making sure that my plants are happy and the little critters are happy than trying to look pretty. Actually, it is always pretty, but to make it easy to admire from every angle, Velia laid decomposed granite paths. I'm not a, 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 a total round circle or a square or rectangular person. I'm more of a, you know, I don't know why, it just feels better. So when I designed this, this is old brick, by the way. I, somebody gave me all this brick. So, and so I got my water hose and I just kind of laid it out and I kind of kicked it into there. So it really isn't a circle. It really isn't kidney shape. It really isn't, I don't know what shape it is, but but it was, I liked it, it felt good. To top it off, she enlisted Jose Luis Rosales to build an arbor for a special tribute. I bought that, that statue because La Virgen de Guadalupe is a patron saint of Mexico and I'm not a very religious person, but I'm a feminist too and, and <laughs> I just believe that she was a powerful lady. I have five sisters and my, I have five daughters and there's a lot of feminine energy in this, in this in my household. So at that time, many years ago when I started it, I couldn't find a real nice outdoor statue. Most of the ones were all made out of clay like the one I have over there. And I knew it wouldn't withstand the, the weather. So this is a cemetery one. And it took me years to try to get her look with that patina look. I mean, it, she looked too faky now. I've been, you know, watering her with something. Every time I put ironite or something like that, I give her a dab. <laughs> And sometimes I forget that I have her out there, and the other day I was having breakfast sitting in the, my dining room, and I, I always see people walking by, and I kept seeing this man walking by, and he kept making the sign of the cross. He kept going like this. And I thought, oh, why is he? And he passed the second. At first I thought, okay, he must have been praying, and he decided he finished whatever, and he made the sign of the cross. He did his second lap, and he came back, and he did it again. And I thought, what in the world is, why is he doing that? Then it dawned on me that he would stop right here and look at her, and he would make the sign of the cross. To edge the driveway beds and add room for friends stepping out of cars, she relied again on Jose. 
Failure tucks in a few vegetables too. I do grow tomatoes. I enjoy tomatoes and I enjoy chiles. So I have serranos. I have a chili piquin plant that I didn't plant. The birds brought it. I'm happy with it. And guess what? I make the best chili out of that chili piquin. And I have to fight the mockingbirds because uh, they come over and they want to, they want their share. And then my herbs are my oreganos. Mexican oregano is used in menudo and a lot of Mexican dishes. They're all interspersed in the garden because my day lilies really need, they really need somebody else with them in order to deter other bugs. All plants are medicines. And in the Native American and in the indigenous culture, they will call plants medicine. All plants, even trees, because they take care of us, right? I mean, the tree gives us lumber, shade, whatever. They take care of us. The plant material takes care of us too. If we didn't have plant material, this world would be just, earth would be nothing but mush. Without plants, we, we wouldn't be here, really and truly. Plants can do without us, we can't do without them. Silvery artemisia makes for good contrast along with smudge sticks. When it's time for me to harvest, I'll cut it and I'll dry it. I had a group of women that came over one time and we sat here and made smudge sticks. It was time for me to cut down the artemisia, that silver king artemisia, the tall one. And we cut it down, we sat there and we made them smudge sticks, you know, the Native American use it for cleansing. Since plants do know what's best, fill your layers pecan leaves and mulch to nourish the soil. I really do believe that the trick to uh, to good planting is your soil. If you keep your soil in mulching and keeping your soil fertile, you don't really need to water that much. I really don't, and I hand water, by the way. I don't have an irrigating system. I mean, I sit there and I look at everyone, every plant, and I talk to them and I say, hey, you know, let me see what's going on. I use compost a lot. I compost, I use a lot of compost. But I'm a big recycler, you know, composter, reduce, reuse, everything. I really do, I'm the whole, I mean, I, bought into the whole the whole cake when I decided to go gardening and it, it and I realized it works. I feel so much better the, the way my mother used to garden. My mother used to tell me, Velia, go throw the slop over there by the mesquite tree. She called it slop because my mother was from Mexico. She didn't know how to speak English and so she heard the word slop which was they used to give the pigs and and I would go dump it by the mesquite tree and then in the next summer she'd say, Velia, go to the to the where I told you that and go get me some soil. She was composting all this time. She was burying, she was doing, you know, uh, and so I learned back then how, it, just watching my mother, you know, and she just grew carnations and verbena. She didn't have a big, you know, thing like this. My grandson comes over, his grandma can have some broccoli, wash it with a water hose and he eats it out here. So, you know, it's, it's important for the new generation to know that we need to, you know, have green space. We need to take care of it. We need to continue growing the plant world, or and I call them medicine. They really are, I mean, I'm, they make my soul feel good. When I come out in the mornings to see my day lilies, oh my God, I feel like, oh. I mean, they really wow me, they really do. When I come out here and I see things blooming, I'm just, you know, thinking, wow, this is, this is wonderful. And uh, I take care of them and they take care of me, believe me.